Hello, hello, hello. Hello, everybody all over, all over South Africa and hopefully all over the world. My name is Seth Nyker and I'm reporting to you live from uh, Johannesburg, South Africa in LA. Yeah, I know that sounds confusing. LA in Johannesburg, South Africa. Uh, yes, that's right. Those of you that know the show, in such a time as this, we're broadcasting live from Lower Alberton uh, and having these courageous conversations. And we're so happy to be partnering with the formal campaign in the 120 day campaign linked to faith action to end gender based violence and the many partners that you can see up on your screen. We've got We Will Speak Out, we've got UN Women, we've got Heartlines, Sonke Gender Justice, the Solidarity Fund. And there's about 70 other organizations that, are, that is a part of this collaborative. So we are just excited to be in studio today uh, at the middle of the hour. It's 11.30 a.m. And if you're around or you've got some friends, get on and be a part of, the, of this conversation. Today, titled From Toxic to Transformative Masculinity, we're going to be in conversation with a, a friend of ours, a friend of the movement, a friend of the work that Sonke Gender Justice is doing, and also a friend of the collaborative Faith Action to End Gender-Based Violence. Aha, looks like he's in the studio. This is me, Seth Nyker, in conversation with Vusi Kebekulu. Vusi, how are you doing, my dear friend? Yeah, 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 Seth. Uh, good morning to everyone. Um, I'm doing great and I can see that you look lively and you're so energetic and I'm looking forward to be part of this program. Yes, yes and, and, and I know that there's some people that are already saying, yeah, yeah, yeah. If you want to say hello to Busi, it's now your time to unmute your mic and say hello. If you want to give a digital hand clap or you want to say, Busi, we are here, we're backing you up. busi has got his own people that have signed in via Zoom and there are people on Facebook Live. But for the rest of the show, until we allow us just in line of us uh, maintaining the, the flow, I'll ask us all to please mute our mics and mute our videos. But the chat box is where you can, you can bring it on live. So I want to encourage you right now. If you are on Facebook Live, and uh, I, I know that it'll pop up there in a few seconds, and on Zoom, I'd like you to just give a greeting from wherever you are. You are. I said to you that I'm in LA, yeah, Lower Alberton, Johannesburg. Vusi, where are you at today? Well, I'm just around the corner, you know, um, in the inner city of um, uh, um, Johannesburg, you know, I'm based in the Brafontaine and uh, I'm enjoying the, the weather as well. Everything is okay today. And I hope that we don't have the challenge with the load shedding. <laughs> yes, yes, I, I hope so too. And uh, we are grateful to have Dr. Pakati from Faith in Action that's also here. So if you are here and you're from Faith in Action, the movement, please, on the chat box right now, those of you that have muted your mics and muted your videos, you are on with, with us on Zoom, please say where you're at, where you're from, and which organization you're with. We love to, be, uh, we love to know who you are and, 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 and where you're at from. So let's get into this. I want to I wanna say to you that while I've got Vusi in, in the room, I also know that he's, he's from the south part of Joburg like I am. Now, way back when, he came from a famous place in KwaZulu-Natal. For some of you, you're going to shy his hand when I tell you, yes, the guy, you're actually meeting a real live person from Nkandla. I know it's got a famous, I, I won't say what, I won't say where, but originally from Nkandla, KwaZulu-Natal. And today, though, he, he resides in the beautiful space of Joburg South, where I, too, not far from him, graduated in my early career in school and high school. So, so uh, I'm, I'm grateful that, that, uh, that we got Vusi with us and we'll speak to Vusi uh, uh, as the show builds. But let me, by way of introduction, a year ago, I know that it, it, it might sound uh, un- Let me just unmute there. A year ago, we got together with a group of faith-based organizations who had recognized uh, that they had to do something about the uptake. And if I may say the uptake or the uprise, the uprising of gender-based violence that had already been in South Africa, but was further exacerbated by the realities of life that every one of us have had to deal with within the COVID-19 world. And in that kind of space, uh, we, we have seen and we have become uh, aware of the fact 
that a group of organizations started up with a campaign, 70 day joining in where they wanted to see the end of gender-based violence and femicide. Now, that was written by a colleague of ours, Mahadi Butelezi, some, some time ago in an article they published. And this is what it is. A collective, a collective of faith-based organizations uh, observed the sharp increase in gender-based violence and femicide, and then uh, decided to work inside the lockdown atmosphere. In response to this crisis, FBOs and gender activists met in June 2020 to discuss how faith organizations and community could become key players in addressing attitudes and practices that perpetuate GBVF in South Africa. Now that was about a year ago. In the mix of moments, Sonka Gender Justice has been a part of, of that movement. And Vusi, I know that you knew of the launch. How has it been that you got connected with it? And why are you guys, uh, as Vusi Tadakulu from Sonka Gender Justice, so excited about this work that is happening through Faith in Action? Look, for, for, for simple reasons, um, I think Sonke has done a lot of work working with, working with men and boys uh, to uh, promote gender equality and also to tackle gender-based violence. And um, whenever we find the space to work with uh, faith leaders, we jump to that opportunity because we strongly believe that uh, faith leaders, they have a huge role that they can play to address these issues. Look. Uh, every space of our lives, uh, faith leaders are there, you know, and if we don't engage with them, if we don't actually allow them to be on the space, share the space, share the ideas, uh, I think we'll be missing the point. So when that uh, platform opens, actually, we took it both hands and made sure that we get on, 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 on board and we engage on these issues, especially if it's issues that um, are meant to 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 bring peace in our in our communities. So there was no way that we'll be sitting back and say this is not our campaign. We're really excited, and I'm still actually hoping that um, we'll do more with faith leaders, not only just Christianity, but all faith leaders. We need them to, on this space to engage on these issues. Wow, beautiful, and thank you for for letting us know. So you can hear this is Vusi with us in studio. Let me just check in. From the chats, I figure some people know Vusi, but I just want to say a, a shout out of hello to Shamza Suleiman from USAID in Tanzania. We've also got uh, Anzu Ndao coming to us from the Institute of Gender Studies at the University of South Africa. So if you just come online with us uh, via Zoom or on Facebook Live, please say hello. We've got Andile that is helping us from Heartlines with the tech. So he let us know who's arrived. And we want to be inclusive to you. So if you've got some ideas as, as it pops up while we're in conversation with Boosty, and if you know Boosty, please holler at us and tell us where you're coming in from, because we want to build this network, not only in South Africa, but across Africa and around the world. Now, friends, like we must do in African style, where we must honor our leaders. Let me honor this, 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 uh, this colleague of mine. Boosty is a regional coordinator for social structural drivers portfolio for Sonka Gender Justice. Men Engage Africa Secretariat. He has been involved in training on HIV AIDS, gender related issues since 1998, when he joined Planning Parenthood Association of South Africa, uh, AKA PPASA. In 2001, he was appointed as Men as Partners PPASA Provincial Coordinator and participated in the establishment of Men in Partnership Against HIV AIDS a national campaign coordinated by the Department of Health. In 2004, he joined the Reproductive Health Research Unit as a project coordinator doing study on HIV within Johannesburg inner city hostels. Vusi has a project management diploma and is currently doing his second year in religious and theological studies. Married and as a father, here yeah, you better believe it, a daddy of four right here with us. And right now, in 2021, on the 18th of November, Vusi is joining with me in this conversation. Shaya Zandla for Vusi Tadakulu. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I, 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 I'm grateful. I'm so, I'm so passionate about uh, the work that you're doing as well, because in some ways, working in communities, working on topics of justice, but yours has been focused for almost 15 years on this arena of gender justice. And if I may say, link to your work, Busi, what is the passion that brought you 
to work uh, with gender justice? And what's the why, if I can ask, that underpins your work? Well, uh, let's say, Seth, for um, off records, it's for salary. <laughs> I'm kidding, I'm kidding. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I hope my, my bosses are not around here, you know. Um, yeah, but simply um, because of um, when, I, when I grew up, um, I grew up as a young man um, who, who went through a lot, you know. Uh, I think I've experienced a lot of things and um, some of those things actually, um, um, it's violence against women, it's violence against um, girls. And I also contributed to that, you know, and um, when first time I was approached uh, to be part of this work uh, in 1998 by PPSA, um, it gave me a platform actually to also to reflect on my personal, um, uh, personal life. And it also actually gave me an opportunity to see what actually went wrong in my life. And it also gave me an opportunity to engage my peers. And by then, I was still young, uh, with a lot of energy. Um, and 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 from there, I felt it was very important that I move on, you know, and uh, I engage uh, um, not only just um, men, but engage even some women as well, because. I strongly believe that these issues is not just a men's issues. You know, we can't talk about women um, without them. You know, uh, also in, engage with them so that they can also express themselves. So until now, I think what it pushes me, what makes me to wake up in the morning, it's based on the experience that I've actually encountered. And a simple reason, I'm a father to talk to, to four lovely daughters, you know, I'm a husband, um, I'm a brother to someone else, you know, and um, uh, I'm also always worried about their safety because I cannot be everywhere to protect them, you know, and I don't think protecting them, it's, it's, it's something that I really need to do. So um, um, the reason that I'm doing this work is simply to say, let's, let, let, let's, let's uh, as men, create a safer space for women and girls so that they can be free, they can walk freely wherever they want to go. And until we reach that goal, I don't think I will stop, even if my energy comes to, you know, but I will keep on pushing. It sounds like, Vusi, that the passion is long way beyond even past the salary. So, so even if it looks like, even if the salary stops, there's a commitment to the work uh, within the NPO sector that you've been in for the last 15 years. And we want to say thank you for taking the time to, to be here. Yeah, for those of you that are that have come online, we are with Vusi Kabekulu from Song Agenda Justice on the launch of the 120-day campaign, not 16 days. And we don't want to negate or diminish 16 days of activism. But can you imagine the bold stance of organizations, collaboratives, more than 70 plus organizations coming together with organizations like UN Women, We Will Speak Out. Um, Sunk Agenda Justice, Heartline, Solidarity Trust. I mean, there's a whole range. I think the, the Lutheran Church is there. There's some Anglicans that are there. There's some folk that are coming from, uh, from Hinduism and Islam. There are some businesses and entrepreneurs wanting to get around this topic of ending gender-based violence and femicide. Uh, we are here with Vusi to guide us through, through this time. Now, We'd like to take a step away because you've heard about Sonke Gender Justice, you've heard about Vusi and his kind of professional landscape. In some way, you also know that he's a dad of four. But we'd like to in this way of stepping behind the veil. And uh, Brene Brown talks about it in this way. I'd like to give a paraphrase of a quote that I picked up. She says it like this. You either embrace your story or you're always going to be standing outside hustling for your worthiness. Because of my own tradition and my own learning, I felt like, you know, wow, that's, those are words that if Biko was around, he would have, he would have put it out. He would have put it out in some, in some kind of consciousness construct. We, we, we either are standing outside our story or we, 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 we make the choice to embrace our story and stop hustling for our worthiness. So in this moment, we wanna do a spotlight with the, a, a story connection. And some of this approach and work has come out of the organization of Heartlines, where Heartlines will talk about hashtag WYS, what's your story? And we are, uh, we, we are taking in, in a way and an approach of a story sharing initiative. And we've asked 
Avusi uh, today to tag line that with and tag team the story sharing with a story that he will tell to himself from where he is right now in this place and time, if he could tell a story to his 15 year old self. And we're grateful for some of these initiatives to, be, uh, to have been drawn out of global work done by UN Women, one of our colleagues in policy in our design conversations shared with us and every one of us in the design team were just astounded by the reality that one could take the time to write a letter. So it won't only be done here today. Today it will be in spoken style, but we are hoping that some of you out there might take up the opportunity to write a letter to your 15 year old self. So if you're a man or you describe yourself as a man, or if you describe yourself as a woman, or if you describe yourself, however you've decided in your identity construct, can you imagine speaking a story to yourself at 15 to end gender-based violence as you're thinking about a world that's made complex by the injustice of a gender-biased and prejudiced society? So let us take this moment. So I'd like you to breathe in, those of you with us that are on Zoom, I'd like to set a tone for it. It's almost like, you know, if you've got your coffee shop, uh, uh, you, if you have a coffee and if you wear the coffee, you know, take a sip in a moment, but it's time to listen to a story uh, that Vusi will share with us as he speaks to himself. But as we reflect with him, we hear the wisdom. So Vusi, my dear friend, we are here to listen now. As we've asked you, we're going to listen. And then hopefully some bit of the telling will be what we reflect on and what we end up doing in our society to make healthy change. Ladies and gentlemen, we're gonna spotlight him right now as you listen to our dear friend, Spusi, uh, Vusi Tsebe Kulu. So Andile, please, you can uh, spotlight Vusi in this time as he takes the mic. Thank you, sir, over to you. Thanks so much, sir, for this wonderful opportunity. Um, I, you, you, you just take me back to where I come from, you know, from, uh, from, from, from my teen, teenage times, you know, growing up. Um, honestly, by then, uh, for me, it wasn't actually clear uh, whether uh, the violence that was perpetrated against women, it was wrong, because I think, um, uh, to me, it was, it was normal. The violence against women, it was normal because I, I, I grew up in that environment where whenever someone disagrees with you, you know, we have to bring that person uh, to under control. And that control, it includes uh, violence. Um, um, I, I remember when I was still um, uh, playing soccer, I, I used to adore one gentleman who was good in soccer, you know, and um, he, he used to have multiple sexual partners, I think because of his soccer skills, you know, and um, he had too many girlfriends. And, but the, the tricky part is that uh, he used to beat them every time, you know, on the streets, he will beat them, he will change them anyhow, like socks, you know, um, but still, all these women, they will actually admire him, they will always love him, you know, and even when he beats them on the streets, they don't actually um, uh, run away, you know, like it's like to them, it's, it's, it's normal. And guess what, with that, I, 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 because I admire him, I thought this is the right thing to do, you know, um, I remember my first girlfriend that I, I had, um, I'm, I'm sorry for disclosing that information and my wife, I hope she's not looking at this, you know. Um, my first girlfriend that, that I dated, um, there was nothing that um, we were fighting for, but for no reasons, I just gave her a clap, you know, simply because um, I got the messages that uh, if a woman you beat her, uh, she'll be under control. You just need to stand authority. So I beat her. Well, um, I don't know whether should I say unfortunately or fortunately, uh, she fight back, you know, and I was in trouble. I was in trouble. She was stronger and uh, no one actually helped me. People were just watching and say, how can you allow a, a girl to, to beat you? But she fought back. Now, from that, actually, it tells me that, um, look, the violence is not the right thing. But unfortunately, the, the, the society, the violence was, was something that actually was there, you know. Um, look, I always share the story that 
I've never seen my father kissing my mom in front of me, you know, um, since I was born. But I remember vividly several times um, when my, my father would shout at my mom. Well, fortunately, he had never uh, beat my mom in front of me, but he, he would shout at my mom, swearing, swearing at my mom. And to me, that it was send a message that really the violence against women is the right thing. Um, it, 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 it continues, you know, to live in that space where you normalize everything. Um, and until one day um, I came across other, other young boys who were, uh, were fighting each, uh, against each other, you know, because from where I come from as, as a young man, you know, you have to, you have to fight your battles. And uh, we, we fought and uh, after that fight, um, all of us were actually bleeding. And uh, according to our culture, those who, who knows the Zulu culture, after fighting with sticks, and you're bleeding, then you go to the river, you watch each other, you know. Uh, but deep in my heart, I was actually thinking about how does someone who is powerless, someone who cannot fight back, feels whenever you be that person, you know. And it's something that actually challenges me. But unfortunately, I didn't have any, any platform to address these issues because in our days, I don't think the, the issues of uh, masculinity was an issue. I don't think the issues of gender-based violence was an issue. So I had no place to talk about this because once you talk about this, you become, a, you become like a, 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 um, an, an abnormal man, you know, you're not a real man. How can you complain about uh, um, uh, violence against other people? So um, I, I, I had to live in those spaces, you know, and it was said whenever I see my mom crying because of my father swearing at her, you know, but I, I couldn't do anything, you know, I had to take it like that. But so I think um, later on, I, had, I, I, I came across a very sad, uh, um, um, uh, very sad um, incident, you know, that happened to me, you know, um, it's, it's, it's when one of the Fridays I was actually with uh, my female cousin. And uh, um, um, unfortunately, we were approached by three guys who, were, who had guns, you know, and uh, these other two guys, they, they came on me and they overpowered me and they hit me on the head. I fell on the ground and they should have stamped me on the, on the ground. I was bleeding, but just a meter away from me, it was my female cousin, you know, uh, who was raped by another guy, they put a gun in, in her mouth, you know, and um, I was just helpless. I couldn't help because uh, I was overpowered and I was scared. But at the same time, it was like, what's happening, you know? Um, she was raped by one guy, uh, but their plan was actually to, to can rape her. But fortunately, some people, because they heard noise, they came and, and assisted us. Look, I think, the moment that has actually struck me so much, even today, it's when everyone was concerned about me bleeding, you know, and um, at the same time, I was actually concerned about my manhood uh, that I've let down my, my female cousin, because as a man, I was supposed to protect her. And I was angry, I was bitter, you know, um, I live that pain. And every time when I, whenever I, I, I wake up, I will think about if I can get those guys, I'll pay revenge because I felt like they've undermined me as a, as a man, you know. Um, it, 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 it was a very difficult thing because even people around in, in the community, they would actually make some remarks like, if this thing can happen to me, I will kill someone. Now, it clearly says to me, Vusu, you are not a real man, because other men are saying, if it can happen to them, they will kill someone. So why don't you kill someone? Uh, I was struggling with that, and no one came to me to say, Vusu, go for your counseling, go and talk about this. But it was just something like that, to say, Vusu, you are a man, you failed your cousin. And really, uh, I was struggling with that. Fortunately enough, uh, later on, I managed to um, uh, join some uh, support groups in, in my community. And uh, that's when we were talking about the violence issues. And I was not comfortable to share the story because maybe I might be, be portrayed as a very weaker man. You know, we remain, you know when, once you get to the spaces, you don't yeah. feel comfortable. 
And really, that on its own, that moment, it actually said to me, Vosi, your, your, your female cousin's rapes got nothing to do with your manhood. You have to accept that there was nothing that you could do. And from that time, um, I started to challenge myself and I became a better man. And uh, I started to engage other men and also to feel the pain about how other people feel about it. That's my wow. story, yeah. That's amazing. And, and thank you for reflecting. And as we are reflecting, they are, we are grateful that there are around about 24 participants with us on the Zoom. And I think there's almost 20 plus on Facebook Live. If you then you're reflecting, please get a hold of a hashtag uh, add in a comment on the chat box. We want to make this at a time. So as Vusi has, has kind of taken some time to share with us his story, we've asked, uh, he's kind of reflected, now he's shared and we've listened. And some bit of the telling will move us a, 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 a little bit more on in the show. But at this time, I want us just to reflect on that as we listen to Vusi, the several things that are happening in our society, where society, even, even for him, at the this difficult occurrence of one of the anecdotes that he shared with us around his cousin, people were more worried about him bleeding. He himself was worried about his manhood. These are some complexities that are happening. Who's the prioritized person in our society? Who's the person that is uh, diminished and looked upon with less rights? Um, and so these are, these, are, these are the topics that in some ways are the topics we need to engage and, and look at deeper. Vusi, as you've shared, I'm, I'm mindful that I want to, I know that you'll write something uh, later on uh, in light of your own journey. But if you had at this moment, after you shared that story, to just help me with this, what would you say now as Vusi, dad, you know, having been married and are married, having been through the journey, what would you say now to your 15-year-old self? What would you say to your 15-year-old self, re the realities of our gender-based, unjust, violent world? What's the advice that you would speak in, in this concept of a thought or a letter or spoken word to yourself? What you, would you whisper to yourself at this time? Um. Well, fortunately, I have one grandson now. <laughs> uh, he's three years old. Um, I think one day I'll have time to talk to him, you know. But I think talking to a, a young man, before talking, I think it's very important that um, I walk the talk. I think that one is very, very key, you know, because talking and do something differently, it's confusing. So firstly, it's how do I conduct myself before him so that he can see what I'm doing, you know, uh, to women, uh, to girls, to the community. That's very key. But secondly, I will always actually talk to him about the importance of respecting someone's views and opinion, I mean, views and feelings. It's very, very important because I, 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 I believe that um, um, once if you, if you respect the respect is key, you know, the respect, um, it always even, even allows you to, 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 to agree with someone that disagrees with you, you know, the respect, it says, even if we don't see eye to eye, but I respect your opinion, you know, and then um, um, if, 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 if my son can, can start to respect your, a woman, respect a girl, that will be very important. I think it's just, it's just a question of emphasizing the point of respect, respect, respect. And once if, once if the person adopt that attitude of respect, everything shall follow. Awesome. So here, here is a concept we want to land with you as a part of a 120 day campaign to end gender-based violence and femicide. Think about those of you that are adults right now, and you might have turned you know, 25 or 20, think about 10 years ago. As you look at your society now, as your eyes may be opened, you know, and, and you're more aware, and like one of my mentors says, uh, says to me, he says, you've got to be unusually and critically aware of what's happening in your society. Like Vusi, I too must confess, we have grown up in societies that have socialized us to be these machoistic men. These men that, uh, you know, must handle our business, sort out our tunes, 
it's even in the subtleties that are there, the microaggressions, the, the minute behaviors and thoughts. But if you press those buttons, you see for friends, if we don't handle it, even in the slightest uh, spaces or those minimalized spaces that we think are not big issues, that's what continues to keep this culture intact. But uh, I, I want you to think about that. How would you speak to yourself? And if we're listening to Vusi today, we hear him speaking about the, the angle of, of respect, this mutuality of respect, this, this commonality. And when I hear you saying that, I'm almost thinking about this beautiful proverbial, which becomes cliche, but it's not. Umuntu kumuntu kapantu. Yes. We need to revisit that, but deepen it from the, the centeredness of its, you know, its rootedness in Africa, the meaning in our society and, and where it is that we can deconstruct socialized, uh, you know, politicized, gender-based uncanniness, unjust, injustice, uh, a world that has been in some way set up to, to set up women and set up the marginalized children in our communities who are being failed by, unfortunately, men like us. So, uh, so thank you, Vusi, for visiting that with us. Now, there are some of us that are online and we want to get into this topic of uh, toxic masculinity toward transformative masculinity. Now, I, 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 this is a learning moment for me as well. But before we go there, there are some folk that are online and I will just acknowledge them. We've got Greta Makwenkwe uh, saying hello to us. Uh, we've got McDonald, Kitsamang, uh, Estelle Otto, uh, online here, we, we got Leo Pakati, and Leo Pakati says, a book to have and a book to read, Elements of Counseling by Joanne Scone. Uh, Lauren Goer uh, and Victor Kotzer, it speaks about aspects of a life journey reflections, et cetera. Trauma, spirituality, and religion. So thank you for that resource. Um, uh, has been as he's been listening from you and woman, is saying to us, hashtag faith in gender justice. Toxic masculine definitions constrain our capacity to be human, defend and claim our human rights. So as we're thinking together, thank you to those of you that are making comments. But if you want to put in a chat box, and it might come out as a hashtag right now. It might come out as a tweet. But what would you want to say to the younger self of you or to a generation that comes before you? I'm reminded of a song, you know, it was sung by one of my favorite artists and he says it like this. And may those who come behind us find us faithful. I know there's an original artist, but the guy that sang it when I heard it was Trevor Sampson. And may the footprints that we leave guide their way. This is your moment. What wisdom can we speak? Firstly to ourselves. But in speaking to ourselves, we may be doing some kind of sankofa to remind our, ourselves of what we must bring with us, but also what must never be repeated. So if you online, write in the chat box, Facebook Live, put it there. The, this is where we take our words, our minds and our thoughts, put it in action. And I can tell you now, uh, the collectors of this data that will pick up the words, they'll add it in. Uh, from the Faith in Action movement and put up the hashtags where it needs to be. Some of our comms team is here today. They'll fetch your amazing hashtag and let it ride. But let's, let's move it in that way. Now, in line of leadership, leaders have critical insights, right, Busi? Mm -hmm. They have mm -hmm. critical thought. I've heard of many kind of leaders, you know, uh, good to great kind of leaders. I've heard of, uh, you know, uh, leaders that are dictatorial leaders. Uh, but what kind of leaders are we? And as values-based leaders today, we want to reflect on a, on a leadership insight. So Vusi, at this time, I'd like you to, to kind of speak to us about this critical thought idea of toxic masculinity toward transformative masculinity, from toxic masculinity toward transformative masculinity. What is that meaning to you? How would you think about it uh, for us and as we think with you and learn from you? Thanks, sir. Um, you know, you, you, you remind me, um, <laughs> remind me of my name, Vosi, because Vosi is incomplete, you know, when it's full, it's Vosmozi. Um, it's, it's a name that is not given to everyone. Usually in most families, it's given to firstborn, but uh, for unknown reason, it was given to me and I'm a lastborn, you know, at home. Um, and um, 
when I grew up, well, I didn't actually pay attention that much to that name. Uh, but every time when I do something wrong, I'll be reminded that day, hey, your name is Busmos, of meaning that I have to be responsible. I have to make sure that I carry on with the same name of the Bekulu, you know, everything that I do, I must consider the family, you know. Um, and in that sense, it was like, no one is asking me about my feelings, but it's about what they think about me, what is it that they expect out of me, you know. And um, that on its own, it's, 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 it's very toxic because now uh, the way you walk, you have to walk like Vosmozi. Uh, the way you speak, you don't speak anyhow, you know, you have to be politically correct. Um, the way you conduct yourselves in, in community, you have to show that you're the real man. And uh, even in the family, if there's the gatherings, you know, um, they can't do anything before Vosi gets there because this is a brother who's Vosmozi. And that on its own, it's a, it's a toxic masculinity because the expectation is too much on me. You know, I, I, I can't um, ex express myself. I have to always think about people, how, what they think about me. But again, that's sad, you know, it's, it's, it's very sad because when you think about it, a young boy, um, let's say it's around at eight in the evening and the family discover that there's no salt for cooking. The person will be sent to the shop, it's a boy not the girl, you know, and even the names, the boy will be given the, the name like Victor, you know, and the, the, the girl will be given the name Precious, you know, she's not allowed to go out at night, but you as a man, you are required to go. And then no one will ask you, how do you feel about it? Going it out, outside of the yard at night, uh, how do you feel about coming across thugs or even the, the so-called ghost, you know, no one will ask you about that, but as a boy, you have to go out, you know. And, and that on its own, it's something that actually it put a lot of pressure on men to say it means that no one cares about me, you know. And that leads me to say um, most men, they can't give love because they've never actually been given love. So you can't give what you don't have. Now, in a nutshell, um, the, the toxic masculinity, because there's nothing wrong about the masculinity, but the toxic masculinity, it's a problem when now uh, you end up proving to some people that you can do it as a man. And once you fail, obviously, you will look at people that you can blame. And obviously, those people that you can blame, it's women and children, in most cases, because they are vulnerable. You know, when you come back, you failed at work, and they, your boss says to you, what kind of a man are you? Obviously, when you, when you get back home, you want to stamp the authority to say, as much as I'm useless at work, but here I'm a man and I will show you that I'm a real man. And it comes in different uh, ways. Some that becomes so abusive, some that become so um, angry, you know. So the toxic masculinity, it's a serious problem. And that is why today it's very difficult to address the, issue, the issues of gender-based violence simply because of toxic masculinity. To share, you, to share with you one of the story that I had with other guys in Soweto when I was doing a men's seminar. He said to me, look, I don't condone any violence against women and girls, but the problem is the messages that you are given at church. Every time at church, we are told that as a man, we are the protector, we are the provider. When you go to, 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 to home, you are told that we are the, we are the men, we have, to, we have to provide, we have to be the protector. But now the challenge, times have changed. When you go out looking for someone that you can provide, that person ends twice or, or three times than you. How are you going to, to provide that person? So the, the, the problem here is how do we unpack these messages? How do we, because there's nothing wrong about being a protector. There's nothing wrong about being a provider. But how do we unpack these messages so that that young man can understand that as much as um, 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 I'm required to provide. I can provide even if I don't have money. Provision of love, caring, that's part of provision. Protection, um, it's not about you going and buy a gun so that you can protect your family. I can tell you most of men, they buy guns simply because they want to protect their families, you know, and, and that's a problem. It's a toxic masculinity. And once if now uh, you protect these people, once if they let you down, you have to prove to them that I'm your protector and I'll, I'll put you under control. So that's a problem about the toxic masculinities. Thank you. Thank you, Vusi, for, for visiting this topic. So 
as as I'm thinking with you, you know, I I, I also want to part of part of being in the conversation with you. I'm thinking about what was sick about my manhood. What was sick about how I grew up? Uh, like this is crazy, but can you imagine? 14 years ago, uh, it it was still a, a a nuance, kind of a new thing, because uh, my baby girl was born. I was made a father. She 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 allowed me the title to say, "Hey, you are now daddy." Um, and part of the journey was my covenant love partner Marisha was. Uh, we decided we were going to share in roles. So changing diapers became a challenge to brothers and men around me. And when I carried the diaper bag, um, more especially when we came back home. Now, 14 years ago, this is just in my own family's circle. Um, the toxicity of our manhood said, you can make a baby or be a part of making a baby. <laughs> uh, uh, uh. But uh, the diaper changing, that's got to do, that you leave to the lady folk, yo. Mm. You know, um, when I see the sickness of our masculinity, it's uh, sharing of the workload in, in, in homes. And, and, and the fact is today, we have many women who are working with uh, men in the workplace, but yet they have to pick up the slack still at the home. Mm. Even in some societies and, and prevalent in South Africa, as it is around the world, I, I figure as well, we would find a sickness in our manhood. The man can be unemployed. He's at home, but still won't pick up the slack of what do we do with chores? And so everything ends up being in the same way that we can say we're living in a racialized society. I can also say we are living in a gender biased, socialized society. Think about uh, a boy that wants to wear pink or paint his fingernails. Already we told, oh no, that's not for girls. I mean, that's yeah. not for boys. So I, I hear that today that because there is this unhealthy pressure placed on boys. They kind of don't even get to know their, their humanness. But also on the side that we begin to think about how do we transform it? And so if you're out there, one of the ways that I practically put it in, and maybe vusi has got something that he did to shift the pulse, to transform the definition of my manhood was to pick up a, a, little, a little element. I know it sounds crazy, but I decided those many years ago, I'm gonna share time in the kitchen with my cousins who were predominantly females, washing the dishes. It has become a practice. I try to maintain it. Even now, you know, when we go and I've got to watch the children, but sharing the workload. And over time, a few others have picked up on this as well that are in our community, in my family space, where these simple acts of, of, of us disrupting the status quo. What is the status quo? Well, the status quo is, this is for the ladies, this is for the men. But, but to transform the definitions of what is our manhood, how we serve, how we engage, how am I a dad, how am I a father? So that's just one little act. And, I, and I'm grateful that some of the men and the boys in our family are picking up on this, that we can clean together, we can wash together, we can take on the, the parts of life together where we are human. And we're not just defined by these hard and fast roles that says, this is for you because you're a man. And this is for you because you're a woman. So Vusi, what, what have you done in transforming this masculinity that may have been toxic? What have you done as a practitioner? And maybe some, some bit of your advice as we think about the challenge that we need to, 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 to work at to transform the toxic masculinity toward a transformative masculinity. Well, um, I don't wanna lie, Seth. It's, it, it's, it's a very, very difficult thing to do. And uh, it, it takes uh, a lot of courage because once you start changing some of the things, you will be called with names. You might lose your friends, family members, um, even, even in the church, you know, uh, um, or a place of uh, um, uh, um, uh, worship, you might find that you, you will struggle. I remember at some point, uh, there was a gathering at church when I came and um, I, I, I bought my, my own apron, you know, I wanted to help in the kitchen. And um, very interestingly, some women, they were very much uncomfortable to see me in the kitchen. To a certain extent, my wife came and said, 
please don't embarrass me. I know you can help, but now we're not at home. We are here in church, so don't, don't, don't embarrass me, you know. And um, um, I was disappointed I had to go back to my comfort space, sit down there under the trees, wait for dreams. So slowly, um, because I don't think right now I'm perfect. I've been doing this work for almost more than 20 years, but I'm still learning and I'm still challenging myself on some of the things. But one of the things that I always tell myself, it's um, how do I push myself to achieve this goal? Because this is, the, this is the goal that I need to score. And if I become comfortable and say, well, they understand that um, change is a process, it might actually delay the whole, um, 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 it might delay the whole objective. So for myself it to say, how do I push myself and, and, and put myself in a very un uncomfortable spaces for me to bring the change? Because once if I bring the change, every young man there will look upon me and say, I want to be like that man. Because Seth, all of us here, we are role models, one way or the other, you know. Um, and everything that we do, there is someone who's looking up on you and say, I want to smoke like that man. I want to walk like that man, you know. Everything wrong or right that you do, someone is looking upon you. So every time when I do, I, just, I don't just think about myself, but I think about how do I influence the change to young people by the way I do things, my language, when I talk, how do I check things that might actually uh, um, uh, make more damage? And also to allow myself to, to be held accountable. If someone says to me, look, Vus, the words that you use are wrong, then I have to own up that mistake and say, how do I change? Because these things are new to us, you know, but at the same time, does not mean we have to be comfort comfortable. So the only thing that I do is just to push myself and give myself space to learn, but at the same time to say, these are my goal. I need to score. This goal is very important. And last, uh, I think two weeks back, I was sharing with the other colleagues that look, when you speak about the, uh, the GDS 20, 2030, uh, the 2030 is around the corner. What is it that we do? To bring the change and if you can look at what, what is happening in, in, in the world i can tell you things are moving so slowly simply because people are so comfortable to say the change is a process but that change we need to speed up so i've challenged myself and i'm also challenging you Seth, to say how do we hold each other accountable if you find me saying something wrongly don't say this is my friend when i understand he was making a joke Call me to an order right on the spot, you know, so that I can start to say, okay, that means I was wrong and I do things uh, differently. Wow. So, so friends, and, and I love it. I love the way that I, I hope you're hearing it in the space. I too must also declare, uh, like, like you have shared, Vusi, uh, we're on a learning journey. Uh, someone online um, is saying to us, learn to unlearn to learn new ways of doing things. I want to bring a quote that is coming out that Andile has dropped in from Facebook Live and McDonald says, I think it's, it's important to engage men and create a space for us men to deal with our monsters. Uh, I, have a, I have a six year old son and you know we kind of came up with this metaphoric because sometimes even with my own son, I can't handle the pressure. Imagine a six year old can, ring, can run rings around me and my emotions. And some bit about it, I've got to transform how I act as a father, how, is, how is I act as a man. So McDonald is saying, I think it's important for men to engage those monsters. We call it, hey, watch out for the Hulk in you. Watch out for the Hulk, where's that Hulk coming up? You gotta be aware mm -hmm. of that emotion. I think some men that have made the mistakes to like Vusi even said in his, in his own story, and thank you for sharing, having, having learned from the fact that he doesn't wanna be abu an abusive man, but the, the, the hand action, stepping out and giving a smack, because we can't cool the brain down, can't, can't take a hold of our emotions and we act out in violent ways. So watch out for the monsters. But McDonald continues and he says, I'm living in a community where GBV is normalized and getting men to be part of positive role modeling is a huge challenge. And now I realize that you can't give what you don't have. Mm -hmm. Wow, thank you for that realization. So if you know you don't have it, you gotta get it. Get alongside a mentor, get alongside a program, get alongside a community, like Vusi said, that's going to hold you accountable. On a practical way, like Vusi has already pointed to, I'm a part of a group of, of, of football players. We call ourselves Astro Football Fellows. I don't think they'll mind me sharing. But in community, yes, we play football, 
but also we talk about life. And there are men there that are men of honor, that are men that want to do well by their children, that are men that want to do well by their partners, or for them that will say their wives or their girlfriends. And in community, we, we get to be men of honor, to, be, to hold one another accountable, to say to one another, hey, how is life going on with you? Are you feeling stressful? I remember one guy saying to me, hey, dude, one of the, one of the gents, you know, he's struggling with life. COVID-19 is, is messing up. He's losing his emotions. Can we give him a call? So we come alongside him. We encouraged him. We found a way to get out and meet up together so that we could have a conversation. And so these communities of accountability are important. I mean, Etienne Wenger will say to us, a community is a practice. So, uh, so we hear this, uh, uh, Vusi. And, and Vusi, as we, as we are in this 16 days, but for us, faith action to end gender-based violence together with our partners, 120 days. What is our call to action and service? I know that you're a practitioner and an employee of Sonka Gender Justice, but what can we do to serve now, here and now, so that we can do something now? In this next 120 days, what do you, Vusi, say to us, who may be listening and hear your voice, what can we do as a call to service and action? Well, the first question is, are you aware what you are doing is wrong? And uh, if you admit to say, yes, it's wrong, then that means you are on the right track. Because the biggest problem is when we don't actually realize, and that is why every time we come up with this defensive mechanism to say, no, I'm doing this because of this, I'm doing this because of this. But if you say, yes, I'm wrong, then that means we're on the right track. So I will actually make a call to everyone to say, let us not just uh, talk about this, but let's act against this. Uh, the action, it means that you have to um, create a safer space for reporting, even at home. Uh, Seth, I know as, as fathers, most, most of the time, we try to, to show how strong we are. You know, when, whenever our daughters, um, when, whenever we're sitting, sitting with our daughters, reading newspapers or watching TV, you see something happening in Soweto, you say, if that thing can happen to my house, I'll kill someone. And uh, we are actually not aware that by saying that, you are defeating the, the purpose of reporting because your daughter loves you so much and your daughter doesn't want to see you going to prison because he, she knows that if she can tell you, you'll kill someone. Now, she will just keep quiet for the sake of making sure that you don't go to prison. So I think we need not to, 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 to show up as, as heroes, but we need to say, um, let, let's, let, let's encourage the, 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 the reporting. Let, let's, let's listen without judgment. And, and let's, let, let's make sure that we, we, we call each other to an order to say, what you're doing, gents, it's wrong. Sometimes we even allow jokes that are happening, you know, and we take it as a jokes and we just laugh about it. So it's very important that now we start to say, uh, let's act against this. And then let's make sure that the numbers are not decreasing because there is no report, but are decreasing because it's safe out there. And if you can think about your daughter, about your, your, your partner, your mom, your sister, it's going to be easy for you to respect another woman who's walking down the street. Wow, because we're a community of learners and practitioners and we want to learn on this campaign, in the Zoom box, I've just put the text and I'm, I'm gonna ask uh, Andila to help me with the text to make sure it gets to Facebook Live as well. A call to service and action. I think Joel is there so Joel can make sure. If you out there and you know that, that there are some things that you've learned from or that you're challenged by, what can we, we all consider together today about a call to service and action? Uh, you know, if you're in a religious community, a youth community, a sporting community, a corporate community, what are initiatives that you would say are important? Again, your hashtags are well, welcome. Your thoughts and ideas are welcome. I want to say to you all, because words have power, and as you've taken letters and constructed reflections, uh, our comms people will reflect on them and bring them out so that we could, we, we could, we could, we could get in touch with you. Some of your, of your quotations, don't just leave it here. If you're on Zoom, save the chat. Go and post it on, on your Twitter today saying you were part of the conversation this is your critical reflection. Hashtag it, you know, uh, faith in gender justice. Hashtag it, 120 day campaign. And I'm going to ask um, uh, some of my colleagues to put the hashtags right here in the chat so that you know how to hashtag it. So we mobilize this campaign and we call people over the next 120 days 
to be a part of what Vusi has been here to share with us. From toxic masculinity toward transformative masculinity. From toxic toward transformative masculinity. Where if I'm carrying the identity as a person who says I am a man, I wanna, I wanna see transformation in my masculinity uh, a description or identity where I become an ally, not one that's giving pushback and say, oh no, but I'm not that guy. I'm not that one. That's happening there, it's not happening here. We gotta take it up and say, yeah, while I'm trying to do my best, I'm also failing because when I look around, I'm a part of this community. I'm a part of, of this space. It may not be happening in my house, but if it's happening in someone's, in someone's house, it's one too many houses. So how can we get involved and, and, and add our voices? Uh, I wanna just add on from McKenna. McKenna saying, use the religious and cultural platforms, our family circles to change the narrative, moving from toxic to progressive and transformative masculinity. Mm -hmm. Have the conversations, share the workload. We're coming to close and, and we wanna do a close out. So it's our time to check out uh, thank you for those of you that are putting it. If you've enjoyed the conversation right here, it's kind of a hashtag. So if you're online, we've got like 23 people and I know many of you are already part of the collaborative. You're going to have to take it out and get more people here. All right. So put, please put your hashtag check out. For me, uh, here's mine. I'm giving fierce urgency. I can, write a, I can write a thesis on this one, right? But hashtag fierce urgency. What's your hashtag as you're thinking today into the 120 campaign as you join with us, faith action to end gender-based violence. As you come alongside Sonka Gender Justice, uh, reach out to Vusi Tabekulu, he's in Johannesburg, find out about their work, connect with Heartlines, connect with you and women, get onto Twitter, uh, we, we are there. Use the page, the Reconciliation Practitioner page, where you're seeing that it's, it's got my details. If you want us to contact you, we'll, we'll, we'll holler at you, we'll bring a training your way, we'll get a motivational speak out, come on! Let's do this for the sake of ending gender-based violence. Come on one, come on all, wherever you at, let's make this happen. Uh, you heard enough from me. I want, I want to give it over to Vusi Tevakulu to give us his closing remarks and his checkout. And then I've got a special surprise as we close out in style at the first uh, event of our launch, but many more to come. We want to end out with a, with a beautiful anthem kind of song. But over to you, Vusi, as you give us the close. Thanks so much um, for having me today, Seth. Um, though earlier on, you, you put me on the spot because you sang very well. And now I can imagine someone out there would be challenging me to say, can you compete with him? And unfortunately, I can't. You know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but um, yeah, thanks very much. And uh, I, 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 I strongly believe that this conversation, I know an hour, it's very, it's very, it's very short you know, to, to, to have more things to, to discuss. Uh, compared to the mountain that you are facing. But uh, we can actually start now chopping that elephant piece by piece, by piece by piece until it's finished. So let's all come and play our part. To the faith leaders, don't just be the gatekeepers, but be the role players. Because in most cases, you just become the gatekeepers. You don't become part of the, part of the game. So we're encouraging faith leaders, traditional leader, leaders to come on, 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 on this game and play their part so that we can bring the change. So thanks very much for this wonderful opportunity. And thanks for everyone who was, who was, who was contributing to the discussion. Right, 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 right. We, we want to close off in style. We want to appreciate. That's right. Ducky, you did the right, the right one there. Ducky, you standing on the video. I want all of us to turn on our videos because I want us to shy eyes and I want to give some halalas for the launch event. Some halalas, please turn us on to gallery view. Everybody, so you can see everybody. There's 23 people I want to celebrate with you. Please, if you're here, please switch on your videos. I want to do a screen grab. We want to celebrate Busi. We want to celebrate the launch of the 120 campaign. There we go. Look at Nomki. Shamsa is here. Jimmy is here. Hey, hey, where's B Longo? B, B Longo. Hey, hey, jo yes. Makena is there. Come on, I want to see more faces. Daniela Genry is there. Gumani Rachel is there. Shai Zandra, Shai Zandra. I mean, uh, some of you, I, I'm not seeing you just yet. So I'd like to see you. And, and I know Andile will do some screen grabs. Nice smiles, everybody. There we go. Mpokushle. Mabena, yes. Halala.
It's a, been a beautiful conversation. Ah, oh, there's one more. We got to take another one. Swap the screen. There's more people coming on board. It just reached them now. You know, Wi-Fi is keeping them slow. Just hang out with me just for a few more moments. Give me your smiles. There's Leo Pakati. Uh, hey, I'm seeing you now. I can see you now. Are you ready, everybody? Give me that look. The look that's going to end gender-based violence and femicide. 120 days of a campaign. Give me that look. <laughs> ah, la, la. So, ladies and gentlemen, please, won't you please put your digital hands, give a round of applause one more time Thank for Kuzi Kulu. The, the campaign is launched. Right here, yes, out. Thank you. The, Thank you, Vusi. In the middle of the hour, at midday, from me, said Nika, in such a time as this, we want to say, we Thank play you. out in style. Here's the anthem song. I believe in love. I believe in love. Courageous uh, love that can transform toxic masculinity into progressive and transformative masculinity. Peace out, everybody. Enjoy this as Andile plays us out. There is healing for a nation's gone. Live for one another. Time to play our part for the dawning. Half a new day has come. To break the chains that bind and set us free Let us live what we hold dear That's the key to hope Now's the time to share your light One another for each moment Not given a love will lead us off the path of you Take time to see Uh, it may be a long way to go, but we're going to get there. And we're going to get there together. So I want to say thank you to you all, more especially to Vusi Klebakulu from Song Agenda Justice for joining in on us. Thank you to our partners, UN Women, Heartlines, uh, We Will Speak Out, Solidarity Trust, and the host of others that have joined in the collaboration, Faith Action to End Gender-Based Violence. Enjoy the music as we close out. See you on the next show. It'll be coming in a, in a week or, two, or two's time where we're having courageous conversations to flip the script on this conversation of the injustice and the difficulties that are faced by women and by marginalized people and our children in our society. From me, Seth Nyker, hashtag in such a time as this, peace out. Enjoy the music, over to you, over to you DJ Andile.